to another episode of Access Ability. It's a show on YouTube where I talk about the video game industry, accessibility and representation. Basically, how can we help more people to play games and more people to see themselves in the games they play? Released towards the end of the Wii's lifespan back in 2011, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword is, to put it mildly, one of the more controversial Legend of Zelda games. It doesn't really fit with the games that came before or after it. It is a game that is focused on motion controls, overworld as dungeon, revisiting a handful of smaller areas that aren't traditionally overworld connected, and combat that was largely about swinging your sword in the correct direction. Whatever you feel about Skyward Sword as a game, if you've played it, you probably fall into one of two camps. You probably absolutely loved it, or can't stand it. While I recognise that Skyward Sword in its original release had some big flaws, namely nobody needs to talk to Fee that often and no one needs to be told on every boot up of the game what a green rupee is, I still really love Skyward Sword. It is one of my favourite Zelda games of all time, and I'm kind of disappointed we're probably not going to get another game like this, at least anytime soon. I had luck with the motion controls in that they worked really effectively for me, and I really enjoyed the open world dungeon design, I really enjoyed the plot, I enjoyed the art style. I'm a big fan of this game. During a recent Direct, Nintendo announced that Skyward Sword HD would be coming to the Switch this summer. While the most immediately obvious change is the fact the game will now be in HD, there's a host of other changes that we know about, and some of them will hopefully make the game a lot more accessible to disabled players. So today, on Access Ability, we're going to take some time to talk about The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. We're going to talk about why it's exciting that this game now has non-motion control support for disabled players, some concerns I have about where that non-motion mode might be accessible, our concerns and hopes regarding left-handed players who want to play motion controls, and what I hope that this means for Nintendo's ongoing support down the line for gamers who cannot use motion controls in games. Let's start off by talking about motion controls. When Skyward Sword first released back in 2011, I was personally a big fan of the game's motion controls. As a right-handed gamer, with no physical disabilities that limit my ability to use motion controls, and having the luck of my controls registering properly, I really enjoyed the feel of immersion that came from one-to-one -one sword motions. I felt like I was really slicing up enemies as I fought through the game. That said, I recognise having that experience with the game was a privilege. For many disabled gamers, motion controls are simply not an option, due to pain, fatigue, or range of motion. This was very much Nintendo's MO, during the Wii years and beyond. Design first and foremost for motion, with non-motion controls as an afterthought if they existed at all. The Wii's unique gimmick was motion controls, so if they weren't making games that were exclusively motion controlled, they were seen to not be utilising their own hardware effectively. This mindset has continued within Nintendo of the years since, an issue we're going to get back to later in this video. For disabled gamers, the news that Skyward Sword HD will support analog stick controls in place of motions for sword combat came as a huge relief. Not only should this open up the game to players who can use a regular controller without motions, but it should also make the game playable for players using either the Hori Switch Adaptive Controller or Microsoft's Adaptive Controller via an adapter. However, I do have one lingering fear about the implementation of stick-based sword combat in Skyward Sword. The fear that it might be a handheld mode only feature. Now, this might seem like a silly fear to have, but I believe there's precedent to suspect this might be the case. Nintendo's Eiji Awanuma, when announcing the game during a recent Direct, was very specific in the language used to reveal button and stick only mode. It exists to ensure the game can be played in handheld mode or on the Nintendo Switch Lite system. There was no mention in that Direct of players who just don't want to use motion but still want to play docked. And if you want precedent for Nintendo making a button and stick control scheme exclusive to handheld mode on one of their games, look at Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, games that I bring up constantly on this show. This pair of Nintendo first party games both feature a button and stick control scheme for catching Pokemon in handheld mode, but force players to use motion when docked. A stick and button control scheme exists, but you're not allowed to use it on the TV. Now, I'm certainly not saying that this will be the case for Skyward Sword, I think it would be a really foolish move for Nintendo to not anticipate the desire for that mode when docked, 
But from an accessibility perspective, I want to see Nintendo be crystal clear up front that non-motion controls will be available to docked mode disabled players. While Skyward Sword getting non-motion control support is a great step forward for disabled players being able to play the game, it does raise an interesting question. Could and should Nintendo adopt this approach for more of its software going forward? It seems pretty clear that at least part of Skyward Sword HD getting a non-motion controlled mode is because the original game's motion controls were such a point of contention. However, the developer is still releasing a number of first party titles such as Super Mario Party that are only playable with motion controls. I would love to see Nintendo going forward make sure that all of their motion controlled segments in games have alternative non-motion ways to play through them, such as using an analogue stick to replicate the motions the player would be asked to do. While I recognise those additional control schemes would take additional work to implement, forced motion controls are one of Nintendo's biggest accessibility sticking points, and taking the approach seen in Skyward Sword HD going forwards would be a great step toward making games on their system more accessible. Nintendo, think about it this way. Cooking Mama Cookstar got pulled off of the eShop because it wasn't a high enough quality game, and even that game had an option to turn off motion controls and use sticks instead of motions. You're falling behind Cooking Mama Cookstar in terms of your support for disabled players who can't use motion controls on the Switch. While the addition of a non-motion control support mode for Skyward Sword HD is the most immediately apparent accessibility change this game has had made to it, I want to take some time during the rest of this video to talk about another accessibility issue that plagued this game back when it released on the Wii in 2011, and is showing no signs of being fixed with this port. Left-handed player motion control support. Prior to the release of Twilight Princess on the Wii, Link in The Legend of Zelda games had always been a left-handed character. It's a small detail, but one I know a lot of left-handed gamers in my life really felt a connection to. When the series first introduced motion controls with Twilight Princess on the Wii, Nintendo decided that because 90% of people are right-handed, they would mirror the entirety of the Wii version of Twilight Princess, making Link left-handed in the GameCube release and right-handed on the Wii. This didn't matter too much for Twilight Princess as the motion controls were fairly simple and rudimentary, but it became a much bigger issue with Skyward Sword's addition of one-to-one -one motion controls, and led to Link being a permanently right-handed character in future titles. While some left-handed gamers were able to power through Skyward Sword, others found the requirement to swing around their non-dominant hand made later stages of the game difficult to complete, and switching around the hand they held the Wii Remote in caused some disconnect between themselves and the character, which was hard to overcome. While Nintendo has not outright stated that Skyward Sword HD will only support playing as a right-handed Link, the reveal trailer for the HD port does state that Link will wield a sword in his right hand and a shield in his left, controlled by the corresponding Joy-Cons. Additionally, the new Zelda-themed Joy-Cons releasing alongside the game feature a shield motif on the left and a sword motif on the right. I quietly hope Nintendo will allow players some method of switching sword controls to the left Joy-Con, if that's their dominant hand, but short of a Twilight Princess style world mirroring, I doubt we're going to see it happen. While it's great to see confirmation that Skyward Sword HD is getting a non-motion control supported mode, I really hope that at some point before launch Nintendo confirms that this mode will work in docked mode, and not just handheld. Nintendo has a track record of making non-motion control modes exclusive to handheld play, and that's going to really limit who this mode can help in terms of accessibility. Over the next few years, I would love to see Nintendo realise that there is a market for their games that are built around motion controls having alternative control schemes for those who don't want to or can't make use of motions. This is the Nintendo game that I would say probably was most built around motions during the Wii years. It was the flagship title that they said couldn't be done without motion, and they found a way to do it without motion controls, and this gives me hope that most of Nintendo's games could be made to work without motion. Nintendo, please look at what you've done here, and don't just use this as a one-off example where you go, oh, well, people didn't like the motion controls in this one, so we'll replace them. Do this for all your games. Give people a different way that isn't motion to interact with your games if they don't want to or cannot interact with motion controls. While I suspect we won't see any gameplay improvements made to The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD to better support left-handed players who want to use motion controls, we can dream. Because 
when motion controls work in this game, they're a pretty magical thing, and I would love it if left-handed gamers got to experience the game the way I did. The magic that I felt the first time that I one-to-one controlled Link and got to feel connected to that adventure.